Okay, welcome back. In this lesson, we're gonna talk a little bit about the complete enterprise data warehouse to include both raw and business data vault or business data warehouse components. Just before we start, keep in mind that the terminology here is, well, it's in need of some disambiguation because certainly uh, people use the names of raw vault and raw in general uh, to mean a lot of different things. And I think until such time as we come with a better definition, for now, bear with me, we're gonna define what is raw and business vault. And uh, this is a tack that you can use as a leverage point for the materials we're discussing with you. Um, but as we move forward, keep in mind you might hear some different interpretations of the same terminology. Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in on the ensemble modeling process. Of course, number one, Elm Workshop, CBC, NBR. We build the target model and that's the enterprise warehouse where everything should arrive into. That's really the, the whole two-step process to get to where we are now, which is building the target database for the enterprise data warehouse or the integration layer. Let's say in this example now we have a model completed. So we've got, of course, the sale, employee, customer, kind of similar case we've been working with. There's products represented by line items. And one of the things that's using line item here is the, is the delivery. Now the thing is, our next step is we begin to map the first source system. Of course, we can build Agile. So we're starting to, to bring the first source system into the enterprise warehouse model. Now, hopefully everything just fits. And in this case, what's happened is we determined that, well, actually for the most part, it does. Um, the source system does have things like store and product and sale and line item, all the good things that we were looking for. So we weren't that far off. There's one small issue that happened once we started to pull it together. And that is that we had established a link and the link was gonna be between the delivery and the line item. And that link is telling us that I can tell you which line item on the sale was delivered in what delivery, because I need to know that. And of course the business wants to know this information because they're trying to track the efficiency and cost of how many deliveries per sale, what line items came on what delivery, that kind of thing, if there was damage. So they need to have it at that level. But what's happened is the first source system that loaded did not have that information. So the first source system said, hey, I can tell you there were three deliveries for the sale, I just don't know which line items were on what delivery. All I know is that delivery people had to go out three times to complete the delivery of all the things, but I don't know which things were on what. So I have this link that establishes a relationship between the uh, sale and all the different deliveries. Well, a couple things is, it's not what we asked for, it's not what the business needs or wants, and of course, in general, it's just, it's not something we were looking for. So what do we do with it? Well, what we do is we have to land the data. And in this case, what we do is we land it in the raw area because it doesn't really fit the business data vault, business data warehouse, and it's all we have. So now it's a temporary area because hopefully in the future, we start to receive information in the place where we want it. Herein comes an interesting debate, which is why even load, or I'm sorry, why even model the link between delivery and line item if you're not gonna have the data anyway? Well, stop and think about it for a minute. If you have a business model and there's a shortfall in the data coming and sources change every two to five years and you have 50 sources, there's a pretty good reason why we would have it to communicate the design specification of what we need. Plus, people come to ask our team and say, hey, how come you can't deliver the results that we're looking for? And you say, well, hey, we did design this with you. We do have it but now we need you to give us the data so we can actually complete and get you those, that information you're looking for. So it's an important piece. And I think the last part of it is, of course, anything that's designated as raw should just be considered that way because when we no longer need it in the future, we don't wanna keep loading it or jump through hoops, creating new ETL to load it. It's just an artifact of the past that we no longer need. So those are the reasons why we do it. Hope that gives you a quick idea of what happens with Ron Business Vault in the ensemble pattern world. Thank you. We'll see you in the next session.